get used to three boring acronyms, MLKEM, MLDSA, and SLHDSA. Well, as if there wasn't enough acronyms in cybersecurity, there's RIP, OSPF, TCP, IP, SSH, AES, and so many others. Now there are three really important ones to remember. MLKEM, or Module Lattice Based Key Encapsulation Mechanism. MLDSA, or Module Lattice Based Signature Standard. And SLHDSA, Stateless Hash Based Digital Signature Standard. With MLKEM, we define this in the FIPS 203 standard, MLDSA with FIPS 204, and for SLHDSA, we have FIPS 205. Many, though, would recognize MLKEM as Crystal's Kyber, MLDSA as Crystal's Dilithium, and SLHDSA as Finks Plus. And so, on the 13th of August 2024, FIPS 203, 204 and 205 were born. At present, there is only one replacement for our key exchange methods, MLKEM, and two replacements for digital signatures. Those will replace RSA, ES, ECDSA and EDDSA. Those are MLDSA and SLHDSA. Both MLKEM and MLDSA are lattice-based methods, while SLHDSA uses a hash-based signature approach. MLKEM. Unfortunately, the key sizes will be larger with our new methods as compared to our traditional key exchange methods. For our current key exchange methods, such as ECDH, we have a 56-byte public key and a 56-byte ciphertext value passed. For baseline MLKEM512, we get an 800-byte public key and a 768-byte ciphertext value passed. To give you some idea, P256HKDF at SHA256 gives us 65 bytes for a public key, 32 bytes for a private key, and 65 bytes for a ciphertext value. For X25519, we reduce the public key size to 32 bytes. The private key is only 32 bytes, and the ciphertext is 32 bytes. Kyber 512, 800 bytes for the public key, 1,632 bytes for the private key, and 768 bytes for the ciphertext value. Kyber 378 goes up to 1,184 for the public key, 2,400 for the private key, and 1,088 for the ciphertext value. For the foreseeable future, it is likely that we will see hybrid methods for key exchange, such as with X25519 mixed with KEM768. For this, we get 1216 bytes for the public key, 2432 bytes for the private key, and 1120 bytes for the ciphertext value. The great thing with this is that the ciphertext value will fit into a single TLS data packet. MLDSA and SLHDSA. Within the NIST standard for dilithium, we have MLDSA 44, that's 128-bit security, MLDSA 65, that's 192-bit security, and MLDSA 87, which is 256-bit equivalent security. With our traditional uh, public key signature methods, then we have ECDSA, which is a 64-byte uh, public key, a 32-byte uh, private key, and a 48-byte signature. RSA 
gives us 256 bytes for the public key, the private key, and also for the signature. EdDSA uses the curve 25519 and reduces the public key to 32 bytes, the private key to 32 bytes, and the signature for 64 bytes. With the 128-bit equivalent for our SLHDSA, we have 1,312 bytes for the public key, 2,528 bytes for the private key, and 2,420 bytes for the signature. If we go up to the 192-bit equivalent for the digital signature, we have 1,952 bytes for the public key, 4,000 bytes for the private key, and 3,293 bytes for the signature. So we can see that the public key and the signature sizes will rise over ECDSA, EDDSA, and RSA. For Finks Plus, we have a small private and we have small public and private keys, but the signature sizes will be much larger than MLDSA. For our, our methods that we have, for 128-bit, we have a small key size of 32 bytes. Private key is also small at 64 bytes, but the signature overall is 17,088 bytes. For 192 uh, security, for Sphinx, our uh, SLH DSA, <laughs> we have a 48-byte public key, a 96-byte private key, and a 35,664-byte signature. So we can see very much with the Finx Plus, or also known as SLHDSA, then our keys will be fairly small, but the signature sizes will be considerably larger. This can have a large overhead, especially if we use it within a TLS uh, packet exchange. Thank you.